everyone, in this video we're going to look at the graphic form of a cubic function. Please remember that the parent equation of a cubic function is y equals x cubed. And this is the shape of the parent graph of a cubic function. Again, this is the parent equation of a cubic function. And this is the shape of the parent graph of a cubic function. Please uh, remember that this point that we have right here, which is at 0, 0, is the locator point for this function, which is a cubic. Now, the reason why this is called the parent graph for the family of a cubic function is because every other cubic graph is a transformation of this parent graph, which means that sometimes we can see a graph that looks like this, but instead it's wider, or we can see a graph that looks like this, but it's skinnier than this parent graph. Sometimes we see this graph to have moved up or down, left or right, but they still have the same shape because it was actually being transformed. So pretty much this is the simplest graph of a cubic function. That's why it's called the parent graph. All of the other cubic graph will originate or would, would resemble this shape. Now, please remember that the uh, graphing form of a cubic function is y equals a parenthesis x minus h parenthesis cubed plus k, where our a, h, and k are the parameters, while the x and y are the variables. So if I were to add this uh, three parameters that we have here, a, h, and k, and if I am going to keep this a as 1 and this h as 0, now notice this, if I change the h to 0, and then if I change the k to 0, then both of these uh, graph, this green and blue graph, are a match. What this is trying to tell us is that this parent equation that we have here has a value of 1, which becomes invisible, and we don't need to write that in front of the x. And then the h is a 0, and the k is a 0. Please remember that the h and k are the locator points. So pretty much our h and k right here is a 0. Now, let's, in, let's look at the effects of these three parameters, a, h, and k, to the graph. Let's look at the first effect of a. So, if a is positive, then the graph just resembles to this shape. Now, what happens if the a is negative? Now, look at this. If a is negative, it flips the graph across the x-axis. So, pretty much it was reflected across the x-axis. It was pretty much flipped on the other side. So, if it's negative, the uh, graph is being flipped. Let's look at the second effect of a. If the absolute value of a is less than 1 but greater than 0, the graph is vertically compressed. Pretty much it becomes wider. So, um, notice this. If I change this a less than 1 but greater than 0, it becomes wider. So as you can see, the green graph becomes wider. So the closer it gets to 0, then the wider the graph becomes. Now what happens if a is 0? When a is 0, the graph is a straight line. So pretty much if we have a value of a that is greater than 0 but less than 1, it is wider. It's pretty much the same thing on the other side. If we take the absolute value of this a, which is 0 0.5, it is wider. So pretty much if the value of a is closer to 0, then uh, the wider it becomes. Now, what happens if it's 1, then it resembles the parent graph. If a is greater than 1, then the graph is vertically stretched or it becomes skinnier. So as you can see here, the, the green graph becomes skinnier and skinnier. This means that if the absolute value of a becomes bigger, it becomes skinnier. Pretty much like when the value of a gets farther from 0, then it becomes skinnier. The same thing on the other side. If it becomes farther than 0, then it becomes skinnier and skinnier. Now, if the value of a gets closer to zero, then it becomes wider to the point that if a becomes zero, then the graph is just a straight line like this. Now, let's look at the effect of 
um, h to the graph. So if h is positive, the graph, so look at the green graph, the graph moves to the right. So positive h translates the graph to the right, negative h translates the graph to the left. Now looking at the k, a positive k translates the graph up and negative k translates the graph down. That's it. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!